So welcome Maureen. Uh, so we, hi friends, we have Maureen Moranga. She's executive director of Lean On Me Foundation in Kenya. And Maureen and I both are here at the TBHIV Symposium, which is being held at the 10th IAS Conference on HIV Science or IAS 2019 in Mexico. So Maureen, uh, uh, this session which we just had the morning on related tuberculosis yes. and the whole TBHIV symposium, please tell us why it is so so important, not just for tuberculosis programs but also for HIV programs. I think this symposium is very very important one because we have been trying over the years to integrate HIV and uh, tuberculosis and we haven't had we haven't got it right yet. And so um, when we have targets for HIV, we have targets for TB, we now have clear direction where we are going around the two epidemics. I think it's time to start having these honest conversations on how best to integrate them at country level. And secondly, right now we are going to TB beyond just treatment. We are looking at prevention. And how does this fall, being that most the most actually important some of the most vulnerable tb populations are people living with hiv so it's a good discussion to have around how do we reach them to target uh, tb uh, prevention among them thank you Marie. that was that yeah thanks, thanks a lot for this and we would also like to know uh, from you particularly Wait. since you are right here uh, about uh, if there's a talk about engaging communities, right? Yeah. And people living with HIV. But at the same time, there's so many people who die of tuberculosis. People living with HIV are, are uh, likely to live normal lives because of rollout of antiretroviral therapy and other prevention care uh, services. But uh, how can we... This is so unnecessary. Every TB case, every TB death is so unnecessary. And uh, So how can we do better, not just for living TB, but also for um, you know, active TB disease, preventive active TB disease, diagnosing them early in people living with HIV, making sure they get the right treatment and care. So how can communities play a, a more central role? We've been talking about engaging communities, but how can we do a bit better, much better, more effective uh, in making sure that uh, uh, no one dies of TB or HIV? TB is curable and uh, we, when we say TB is curable, we mean that if you have TB, you can get treatment and completely eradicate TB from your body. But one thing that we haven't done well is that we haven't ended it as an epidemic. Why? Because in as much as TB is curable, it comes with also a lot of challenges. And some of these challenges range from uh, lack of knowledge, from improper access, late diagnosis, stigma and discrimination, human rights violation, and the list is endless. So for us to actually be very, very uh, deliberate about ending TB as an epidemic, we first of all need to uh, identify, to, make ha to have people-centered interventions. We have to understand the people, understand their needs, understand the complexities with which they live, and understand what works best for them. We need to have a menu of options for people to be able to access TB treatment and to be able to access prevention or whatever it is. Just recently we've been doing uh, uh, an exercise called Finding Missing Cases, and I think one question we need to ask ourselves, why are they even missing in the first place? And these are the questions that if we answer, then we are going to walk into the we are going to begin the journey of ending TB. And this is where civil society comes. The civil society have been known traditionally for supporting access, adherence and retention to, 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 uh, to services. We have also been known for pushing governments to meet their commitments to ensure that the services are actually available and they are provided in a way that promotes and respects human rights. So this is where we need to bring the TB response. We need to take it from the lab and from the hospitals and bring it back to the community to be able to understand the community, create awareness, support access, adherence and retention and address all the barriers that come with it. Thanks, Maureen. A very positive note to end. But before we end, before we let you go to the session, she's also a panelist here. Thanks a lot for you know giving us some time in between sessions. Uh, Maureen, uh, we read the donors are committed to provide latent TB treatment, TB preventive therapy to uh, 6 million people, right? Am I right? 6 million That's people true. by 2022? Or 30 million, 30 million sorry. Million. 30 yes. million people by 2022. Yes. Out of these 30 million, 6 million people living with HIV will also get uh, TB preventive therapy by 2022. Yeah. I think, uh, what do you think? Is, is like, of course, government commitment is welcome, but are these targets ambitious enough? Uh, 30 million by 2022. 
I think I have had quite a mixed reaction around the targets. Some are saying they're too high, some are saying they're not ambitious enough, but I think it's a good place to start. With the 30 million by 2022 is a good place to start. And this calls for a lot of commitment, a lot of government commitment, a lot of donor commitment, is an effort from both ends, and a lot of also civil society engagement to ensure that those, need, those that are hard to reach are actually reached with services. This could be a huge target for those who do not reach the hard to reach people because they are the most difficult to reach. But it could also be an easy target for programs that are well designed to leave no one behind. So I think it's up to us to ensure that we are all playing our roles to um, achieving this target. But we hope that we will increase it even further and ensure that everyone is able to prevent TB. Absolutely. Maureen, as you know, IS 2019 is going to open in the next few hours or perhaps very soon. So what is your message to the people, uh, you know, uh, to all the HIV agencies here, all the TV agencies, all the groups on hepatitis and other conditions, which scientists and other advocates who are working here? What is your message to the, as the conference begins? Well, as the conference begins, my message is one, um, let us ensure that every decision we make, everything we make, we have the person at the center of our decisions and ensure that we are rolling out programs that respect and promote human rights and that feel, make people feel comfortable to access. Secondly, I think science has given us a lot, a lot, a lot of mileage. They have made this so breakthrough um, um, discoveries and now we are able to uh, manage the epidemics. I think what we need now is the political um, well, political support, we need the governments to make their commitments seriously, to take their commitments seriously, we also need civil society to play their part in pushing for accountability, and we need to put resources where they need to be. So we are calling up for increased resources to beat these epidemics, but also ensure that they are efficiently and effectively used, and that no one is left behind. Absolutely. Thank you for perfect statement to end this meeting. Look, we sh no one should be left behind. That is what governments have committed yeah. and, uh, and 193 countries by adopting sustainable development goals. We were in conversation with Maureen Muranga, Executive Director of Lean on Me Foundation in uh, Kenya. And she is here at TBHIV Symposium as a panelist, and uh, which is being held at uh, 10th IES Conference on HIV Science in Mexico. Stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you.